All right, um, so, welcome back. Um, thanks everybody for, um, I'm gonna sit down. Um, but welcome back, thanks everybody for everything you did last week. I'm sorry I checked out early. Uh, I was like deathly ill for the whole week. Um, so I'm actually really glad I left. I don't think I would've made it home if I didn't think I did. Um, but thanks for every, everything everybody did for uh, last week. Um, so tonight, tonight's theme is we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Uh, you know, like research is kind of tedious, takes a long time. It's not like the most exciting thing in the world. So we're gonna try to bring a little bit more energy <laughs> back to this before we hit the creative stage of this project. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun tonight. Uh, and then we'll see what the time looks like. We've got some time at the end, we'll do a little bit of work. But if not, tonight's just gonna be more about getting a little bit, getting to know each other a little bit more and have a little bit more energy. Uh, first things first though. What? Sorry about it. <laughs> She may have to go. She probably just to make sure she got all of them. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, tonight's cool. agenda. We just went over that. Everybody know what it is? Yeah. Just candy for people to get it right. Fun. Fun. Can we get something right? The agenda's right there. Okay, Fun to be. so, all right. Um, here's a quick catch up. All right, so. We have uh, our crowdfunding project. It's always going on, going on at the same time. Yeah, it's a fun theme. It's Halloween. Does anybody have any objections to Halloween? <laughs> Did that just rhyme? I don't like Halloween. <laughs> no, like Halloween. I don't like Halloween. I'm not a fan. Do you have like a religious objection to no, Halloween? No, I just okay. I don't like well, Halloween. Well, then I, you can have your own opinion over the court. I have a word. Um, <laughs> So, I haven't dressed up until I was like seven. Oh, <laughs> that pains me. Okay, so where we are right now. Um, so we're developing the video. We're also developing the pitch. Hey, I'm going to separate you two. <laughs> yep. Uh, so we've got the commercial. Um, Andrew, did yes. I get your name right? Oh, uh, it's Owens. And the apostrophe would be after the S. After, yes. But I that's thought okay. that's what it was. I was like looking out the side. I'm sorry about yeah. that. I apologize. It's confusing. Um, so Andrew has produced a commercial for us. Uh, he is our local advertising major. Clap. <laughs> that worked really well. Um, so Andrew has uh, produced a commercial for us because, you know, we have our crowdfunding websites, video on the top, pitch on the bottom. Um, and with that, we need video on the top. So he did. He's produced that for us. We've been working on it for the last like what week and a half, two week weeks. And a half, yeah, somewhere around there. Um, PR department's putting out the pitch as well. Um, but we need ten people to be in it. Isn't that exciting? So everyone, almost. Yeah. <laughs> <That shows laughs> everybody that's in here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Jess, we need ten people to be in it. Um, if you want to be in it. Uh, you should be in it. It's going to be cool. It's going to be on the internet. There's going to be a lot of people that see it. There's going to be a lot of people that are like really high up in school that are going to see it. There's going to be other people that see it. There are people of power. So if you just like fun, have your name in there. Your name will be under your person as you're speaking. Um, tell us what the idea is, though. You don't have to like go through the script. Okay. Like. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, basically, um, it'll be. It, I might take a little bit of patience from y'all, and uh, it'll. It'll be a little tedious at times, and you're gonna have to memorize a little bit of lines. But the idea behind the video is it's just gonna be one continuous line of dialogue spoken by ten of us. So um, someone's gonna start, and they're gonna be at the top of like you know the airs like staircase on like the fourth floor, and they're gonna start talking, describing what TCC is, what we do, and um, then there will be transitions. You know, he walks into the elevator. Doors close, the doors open back up, and through editing, voila, someone else is there. And then they keep the line, then they just pick up right where the person before them left off. Okay? And so that continues on a journey through Ayers, all right? Even though Ayers is not a central theme of the, uh, of the video because it's not allowed to be. We can use it now. Exactly. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. We can not use surprised, it now. honestly. Um, <laughs> but so uh, that, that's the basic idea of it. And um, it's going to end up. Uh, the last person's gonna, you know, say the last line, and um, he's gonna join all of us uh, on the lawn, and we're gonna say uh, one, like two short words or something in unison. That'll be the video. Um, it'll probably take patience and like a little bit of time. I don't. I've never done anything like this before, so it's exciting. But at the same time, like I don't, I don't know what I'm doing exactly. I'm not a director, but I'm aspiring, I guess. So you are now. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'm guessing check your emails for yeah, absolutely. times. I'll probably email y'all and ask you for 
like really specific like availability times. Um, and once we have that, I'll send out personalized emails with what you're going to be saying, um, like what to wear and things like that. Yeah. Does that like, sound good? Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Genius. I like it. So, Oracle 910 Reno Cop Office. I'm not opposed, <laughs> but I'm not committed. It's I'm really listening. I'm an old-timey bartender. Yeah. This is my friend Ryan McClatchy. He enforces the town I work in. Also known as another. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Everybody doesn't have to be here at the same time to do it. We can work through everybody's schedules. Um, but if you want to be in it, be in it. We'd really appreciate it if you were in it. It would be really cool. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm using this as a little plug. There's always things that are going on behind the scenes. Um, there's the TCC and there's the CCN. So there's always an administrative project that's going on. Um, if we're not hitting your department, something that you're interested in right now, it's coming up. There's always opportunities to build your professional portfolios here, um, whether or not they're in the meetings or they're outside of the meetings. So always remember that if you feel like your professional portfolio is lacking in something, let me know and I'll find you something to do. Um, we're funding the start of a company. Um, so it works for professional portfolio building and that um, when you talk to job interviews, you can talk about it, et cetera, et cetera. So tonight we're gonna have some fun, right? Um, we're going, we've done a lot of work, we've done a lot of drudgery, so we're going to have a little bit of fun. Alright, so tonight uh, we're going to play two games, and they're going to be the start of a occasional time to time tournament between teams within the organization. Um, and at the end of the semester, whichever team has the most points doesn't pay dues next semester. Um, <coughs> teams are two people, you're going to pick a team tonight, uh, or a teammate tonight, and if you're not here, then you can't win the points for the meetings, um, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna be, that's gonna be your teammate for the rest of the semester, and yeah, if you win, don't pay dues. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool, so tonight we're gonna play two games. Um, everybody understand how the tournament works? We're, uh, I'm not sure if it's on this slide or not, but the point breakdown, if you get first, you get three points, if you get second, you get two points, or if you get third, you get one point, and if you don't, place in the top three, you don't get any points, and the points just tally as, uh, as the semester goes on. This won't happen every single meeting, but it'll happen every once in a while just to take a break from work. Um, so, uh, also I have sweet candies uh, for the winners tonight. I thought we might have candy already, so I got Laffy Taffy's, and I also got the best candy ever made. It may taste disgusting, but everybody enjoys eating them. <laughs> Mini hamburgers. Oh I will be eating tonight because I want these back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so yeah. So that's prize for tonight. Um, and then yeah, no dues for next semester if you win. Um, so tonight we're playing two games. Uh, we're playing crisis response. Or we're playing R and D. Some of us have played R and D before. Um, some of you may have played crisis response before as well. Uh, it's used as like a training exercise when Model UN teams are developing their school skills. Um, but before we even go that far, we need teammates. Teams of two. Go. For crisis time, we have a we have a crisis. Um, you represent a country. Two teams. It's your team name. Look at you. Well, so, the uh, country is called Squatting Pandas. Uh, <laughs> you have, you have $10,000, two tanks, and a transportation airplane. Wait, what country should we base this off of? Uh, like Switzerland. Well, these are your resources, it doesn't matter. Okay. These are your resources. You are, Wait, so in, geography you are in landlocked country. Okay. You have a seaport, a airport, an airport. Do you know what? Do we have? So we, we have 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 mountains or large plains? Uh, you are a. You have both. You have, have, you have hills, mountains, you have plains. You have plains. You have you have hills mountains, plateaus. It doesn't matter what GDP is because you have ten thousand dollars to spend. That's great. Um, yeah. you, have, you have each. You have every like <laughs> landscape you can think of. Okay, right. but um, where's this? Hold on. We're not there. Right. Right. So you can buy things. You can use these resources. You have 15 minutes once the crisis is read, and you have three minutes to present it. When it's all over with, everyone votes, and you have to vote for a plan that is not yours. 
you like you have to vote for a plan that's not individual yours. Individual vote or do teams no vote? teams vote. Deep whoever has whoever has the most votes and it needs to be whichever plan is going to work the most, <laughs> not whichever one is funniest. Um, <laughs> That comes to the next game. Um, they win. You have a question? Where exactly is our seaport located in the landlocked country? I will draw the country. <laughs> All right, here's your country. Mark a lot of mountains. That's a very black, like, unified country. All right, here's your country. You have mountains on the east. You have an airport right there. You have a city right in the middle, which is by your river that goes through the middle. You have you have a seaport, and you so have not landlocked. You have a lake. You are landlocked everywhere else. This is land. That's the water. Okay. Does everybody understand the country. Salt water, fresh water. It's the ocean. Okay. It's your North Sea. Okay. Crisis number two, which we have chosen and we are about to embark upon, is zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, Halloween. Halloween. it's classic You're disease, pathogen, pathogen style. So we got zombies coming in from the countryside. You know, but you know, think of this like all of your countryside, and pretty much just slowly coming from the east area over towards the city. Do we all carry the virus? Oh, no. no. Let him explain. And let him finish. We are. It's like a, it's like episode twenty four. You know. Okay. So we we got the breakout. Chaos is impending. You know. We got zombies coming in this way. So you got the ten thousand dollars and the two tanks and an airplane. And an airplane. So, so what do you do with the ultimate yes. goal being, I assume, save society from the zombie survival? And you get it. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, you use your best judgment. So it's a pathogen. Okay. Is that what you said? It's a pathogen. Yeah, pathogen. Airborne. Um, Whoa. Classic uh, blood in your system. I like so it. Right. Bite contact. Bite contact. Bite or scratch. Bite or scratch. All right. You are in the city. They'll make it through the mountains. Don't let that. No, this is pretty. They're, and they're, the not, they're not rough mountains. You're in the city. They're going to make it to you. You have five days before they make it to you. If they, When they make it to you, your city's gone. Ready? Okay. So... Since our country has such a high nominal GDP and our intelligence is through the roof, to say the least, but we had some scientists develop nanotechnology in the very short time because we assumed that this zombie apocalypse was going to happen at some point in the future. So we've been we've had people working on this for a long time. So we've got nanotechnology that we were able to harness into darts, and basically what they do is specifically attack the brainstem of said zombies and really force an explosion of the brainstem. So we sent out a nationwide evacuation to our city. And we got everyone there. And we figured that some zombies would probably evolve and be able to resist the brainstem explosion. Someone always does. So what we did was we built a nice, we dug a nice moat around the city. And, well, not really a moat because there's no water in it. And the zombies that do not die from our nanotechnology darts. They come in and they will fall through the hole because of course we've covered it up with some leaves and we've made it look very believable and everything. So uh, they, they fall in said hole and then we send out our very qualified Navy SEALs with napalm and they just... And we bomb the suckers. Yeah, they pretty much just finish the job for the most part. And we burn them all. You realize that an army was not on your list of resources, right? It's not an army, it's a very specialized task force. And volunteers. <laughs> we also assume there'd be lots of volunteers. Okay, we're okay. Just, just continue, continue. Country. Don't answer my question, I'm just saying. Okay. okay, and then that was well, that's pretty much pretty much it. We thought if they, you can't evolve like being burnt, like burnt repellent or whatever. Okay. 
You know, flesh always burns. So, so sum it up for us. Sum it up for us, real quick. You got a minute left for me. Zombies all die. Two plants. Two plants. First one is um, the dart, which attacks their body and makes them shut down. The ones that evolve from that, depending if they can evolve that quickly, <laughs> will go into the trench that's built around the city and fall and then light them up. And then they all go to ash, ideally, in a perfect world. Well, the zombies are already there. there. I don't know how <laughs> perfect this world is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, yay! Plan one. All right. Question time. Question time. How many questions can we ask of them? As many as one. You get one. Every group gets one question as we go around. Pass that. No, no, pass that. You will fill up the two minutes. But every group gets a question before we move on. Oh, okay. Yep. Can we yes or no question? <laughs> All right. Go. Uh, two minutes. Go. The nanotechnology. How does that affect the zombie? Given as they have no blood circulation. The nanotechnology are like little workout things that specifically target brain stems. And once they find said brain stem, then they're controlled explosions inside the like brain Like a termite. Yeah. Okay, go. Team Squatty Panda. How do you plan on funding all those nano darts? First of all, how many nano darts do you plan on having and how are you going to fund it with just a thousand dollars? Because then, my experience, nanotechnology is very expensive. Yes, but our standard of living is very low. We're like Dubai. Or high or something. I don't know. We should pay 1561. <laughs> so it's a very low standard of living. We don't have much access to It's a very high standard of living. We Therefore, break down every everything that could be used to process things. Nanotechnology. How many starts are you going to have? Good well, continuous plot. How much is it going to cost? Your turn. <laughs> Six thousand dollars. Whoa! Yeah. You get like three nano darts out of that. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, our question: uh, What do you do when your pit fills up? Burn them. What happens when you run out of fuel to burn them with? What's your long-term sustainability for burning zombies? Use all the paper. We don't need books. No, like, 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 like books. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> we throw books. Fuel the fire. Okay. Fuel I don't think you have to gas yeah. for it. But anyways. <laughs> Well, there aren't that many zombies because you said it was what, like a 10 to 1 ratio? No, we didn't say that. I thought that's what you said. No, it was an immense number of zombies. It's too many zombies. Well, we actually said it's too many zombies to kill. No, we said that. That wasn't. That we did. Was All right, you guys are up. Yeah, okay, so what are you going to do to ensure that your water supply and, like, that your city's not going to be infected? We have a will. <laughs> what we're going to do is during the first wave, like once we hear about it, we're going to have everyone evacuate the city. We're going to get people to fill up water buckets and like, well not water buckets, like seal bags of ice and throw them in the freezer and they should last about 24 hours in case, like the freezer will last about 24 to 48 hours depending on how much how many times you open it, and that way we won't spoil. And if you use ex if you fill this extra space with like bags of ice and water, then you'll have that extra water. Yeah. What are you gonna do like after the start? You get one second, question. Second Moving question on. That has to go You're done. How do these you have to technological yeah. bullets? Yeah. So blood yeah. brain stems better yeah. than yeah. the yeah. other yeah. things. Like, well, these actually they're more of a dart, so they can hit the zombie in the arm, and then they. End up traveling because they're little robots, so they can travel through. Why not just hit the brain stem? Well, you said that, that like it'd be a very difficult it. shot to if you're bad at And these are volunteers. Yes. We don't have an army, so these are highly trained brain force. Not every scientist is like. All right. Yeah. Everything. All right. Final comments on theirs. Comments. What? Comments. Comments. Yeah. What's your opinion of their plan? You've got like 30 seconds. Oh, um, zombies can evolve. A, B, I don't think the technology would be okay, that guys. working. Oh, it works very well. C, you have no okay. plan to combat these effects afterwards, like environmental and clearing of the bodies and just that it's like it's burning them. Um, I don't think it would work out fully. I told you to show them the babies. The babies was unethical. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> what? Um, I don't think that your cost is suitable, I think. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to work in the long term. I don't think your water's going to hold up, and I don't think your pit's going to hold it up. Cool technology, but... Uh, no, there's no money there. And what if it fails? Then everyone dies violently. Oh, hey, there's that. What's, what's our final comment, guys? Yeah. Uh, I like the pit idea. That'd be fun to watch. Who's, who's the citizens for now? Who's to constantly see zombies fall into a hole? That's, that's good. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be hard to keep that going. But I mean, it's, if you had the money, it would be a lot of pets. What kind of city has $10,000 in the first place? Besides America. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Seaport, um, put our tanks kind of going around the fence outside. And we're going to commandeer all the boats in the seaport. Uh, then we're going to build again an orderly evacuation all from the, people the city. Fleeing to the city. Yeah, and if they don't get in by the time the fence is up, then they're just kind of uh, yes, SOL. Uh, so commandeer all the boats, load people up Dunkirk style, mm -hmm. and get everyone out of the seaport in search of non-zombie overridden land. Um, and then as kind of like part two, because within five days people should, because I don't, I don't think this is a very large place, um, people should all be able to make it to the fence that um, is easily readily put up by our military that I assume that we have. Um, our two tanks are out here. Well, now, people, not everyone will want to leave, and that's fine. What we are doing is set up a fence, an additional fence over here around the airport and send them over here. And we are calling on the aborigines that live in the mountains and the mountain people as well. And what we're going to do is have them, because I mean, I assume zombies can't really climb mountains very well or fast, and it's too cold for them as well. Um, so they cannot thrive up there where it exists very long now. So we're going to have them um, basically recreate the American Revolution where this is our homeland, so we know the territory and they cannot affect us. Um, and eventually, they would, uh, we would live up here because they couldn't make it, and eventually the zombies will leave or dissipate or uh, one manner or another, and we will have our territory back, thanks to our aborigines, and we would live together peacefully. That's essentially it, really. You have a minute left if you'd like to use it. Um, we're good. You know what? We're just so awesome. <laughs> we are on good terms with both our aborigines, and the this country that the river flows into over here. No, okay, whatever. Because the river is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so this is a this is a hostile post-apocalyptic world. That was never said. Yes, it was. Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have gender gap or income disparity among that people there, so we're very happy and peaceful living together. Aww. Demographic. <laughs> Similar. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> um, questions. Yes. Um, didn't they say that you could go through water? They can go in water, right? Yeah. That was said. Yeah, so they can't walk on the bottom of the ocean as quickly as He, he actually like said that, that though. No, no, no. Right, no. Of the He's answering problems. your question. He's answering your question. Yeah, I mean, they, they can walk on the bottom of the ocean, but they can't if they can't swim, they can't swim to the surface. And boats can go faster than I think zombies can shamble through they, very dense. If there's a seaport, I assume someone has a boat. But yeah. we can just go just coming you. with our tank. We can point our tank at their boat and tell them it's ours now. We... Martial law. Yeah. But then, what about once they get to the edge? Then you have the zombies going into your city, like perfectly. Because like all they have to do is make it to that edge, well, and then they walk to the bottom and walk back. Fence around, around the city. And I'm saying, I'm saying all the way down. Has created a funnel, so once they get to the city, okay. they wait, you, can, you can you can put your comment at the end. What's your question, Meg? What's your question? Um, that looks like a lot of fence. What are you going to do in the event that it's more than ten thousand dollars to build that fence? Um. Well, I think everyone will fear for their lives, so we can probably raise some donations for the fence pretty quickly. Instead of like some kind of Kickstarter thing, Kickstarter Saver's Life. <laughs> Question. Why are you running away? Um, well, if anyone else has already been overrun, it seems like there would be like a small chance of success, and also people need food, so even if you like successfully defended the city, 
probably run out of like supplies fairly quickly. And we're not really bumped in way. We're in search of better land. We have people leaving, but we have more staying. Exactly. All right, what's your question? Um, do you think it's a tenable prospect to um, to even try and uh, keep an area fenced off in the mountainous area when they're first coming in? Well, we're not fencing off the mountain. We're just fencing off just around the city and then just like basically like a road kind of strip. Okay, so secondary fence. Well, maybe like a secondary fence, like right here, but not the airport. airport, airport. airport. This is the also airport has one. Yeah, but we've, not we've given up on all this for the most part. Okay. Don't we not? Well, I mean, they can fence. Not speak. You forgot yeah, about XQZ. Yeah. But I mean, the airport's flat. Uh, it's, 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 it's on there. <laughs> okay. All right. Final comments. What happened to the questions? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mine was mine was about the fence. Also, so still in the back. Okay. Oh. Start. You have you have a question? Are you going to do women and children first on the boats, or is it first come first? <laughs> um, it is right. Yeah, equal so. Okay. Well, we'll say just like young and healthy first, because they be more likely to like colonize the <laughs> land and reproduce. Um, that's that's so not so much a factor until like the day, like last day. <laughs> the remainder. Okay, comments. All right, comments. Starting with Adam. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's a good idea to put a fence around the city in the first place it might create panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Alright, that's your comment. Moving on. I just feel like it's kind of a, a cop out to just abandon the country rather than defend the city or at least like the borders or something like that. Um, I think it's a better plan than the last one we saw, but <laughs> So what our plan is, is obviously enforce martial law. So what we're going to do is on day one, we will start hoarding water and food. Um, we live in a, since we live in a very rural society, uh, obviously we have a bunch of farmers, a uh, bunch of food stocked up, so everybody will live off rations, um, off basic sustenance. So we start hoarding all the water and food, and we spend the $2,000 constructing a, a, yeah, a, a fence of sorts, a wall, around three sides of the city and our plan is to kind of plan is to kind of funnel funnel in this way uh, but it wouldn't even need to go all the way to the seaport because our plan is to get uh, every able-bodied man and woman and teenager in the country to work on constructing vertical walls on the sides of the riverbanks so that these zombies are unable to climb out once they fall in because since the river runs all the way down the country, zombies are going to hit it and they can't get in the water, we understand, but if they have vert uh, high enough vertical walls, they will not be able to get over that. So this is what I'm kind of talking about here. So there's your river bank. Whoop, 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 whoop. There's the water. Oh look, another vertical wall. This would be a timely process, which is why we'd be using every able-bodied man and this would be enforced by martial law. Um, Our, what? Our plan, once the zombies are in the water, is to, since apparently we live in a very hostile post-apocalyptic world, we are going to release a toxin and or oil into the water, which, if the toxin doesn't kill the zombies, we will set them on fire with the oil that is in the water. It's, it's like a, anyone whose job is now lost from working in the mountains, you know, like the miners, they're going to dedicate their time to building these walls. And, you know, we got our lake still, so we have some water for how long we need to live there. Like, a little bit of sustainability. Like, we can't just completely, like, abandon the city and, like, have absolutely nothing. Like, we're going to work on the food, but at the same time, we got to make sure that, like, if we need to farm, if we need to live there longer until we can find a cure to heal these zombies or, like, kill them, we need to be able to live. So, we've got that going for us. But, yeah, this is our plan. We are the squatting pandas, and that is the truth. Yeah. All and right. our volunteers, we're assuming, are going to help us build walls of some sort around like all the water sources and everything. Government officials will work on, on delegating responsibility. And there will be someone with the tank like near the edges to blow zombies up if they're <clears> trying <throat> to sneak through, obviously, because why yeah. not? But yeah, oh, and we're leaving the port open by the airport until day four so that people can 
get in. Yeah, and then we're closing it off. Very secure. Yeah. That's the last part of the river where we're working. All right, you got time. Go. With questions. Uh, cost of materials. Do you have enough money to do it? And, like, materials how? being the fence and. We have enough money to build a ten thousand dollar fence. Um, and well, even if it's not, if we don't have ten thousand dollars, we're assuming since you know people are about to die, you know they're gonna help us. <laughs> Plus, we have made, we, we we made, we've made deals with local landscapers and stuff where they're not going to charge us for it. Right. We're, we're thinking like tax breaks if you decide to donate stuff. We're not really going to like just assume that you're going to help, you know what I mean? But. And more and more than tax break, more just like a, uh, a kind of throwing... Go okay, guys, question. It's frightening how quickly you jump to the prospect of poisoning the river. We understand that, and that's why we're but relying see, on the immensity of the we, lake. We, lay, we yeah, kept this on. I have a question. Okay, but no, but we're focusing <laughs> on the sustainability <laughs> of our land so that we can have enough time to use the water, like use a toxin that won't mess up the water source or kill any of us. Like we're hoping maybe we can even do an airborne like thing that'll like kill the zombies, you know? All right, comments or right, questions? Questions. I don't know where Go. <laughs> You're out of time. Come on. Question. Um, how do you There's plan on coming. bringing more supplies in once you kind of like used up what you already have? Well, again, we left open the sustainability, like places like rural, you know, like yeah, we can all the places. I mean, I mean, and we can once. I mean, if we're going to use zombies are killed, we're, we're going to eventually uh, slowly, very slowly, move people out of the country. Yeah, and we're going to use our airplane before, like, once we get the people in, we're going to use our airplane to ship anything that could be used as resources out here into our area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, we can, move, we can move resources from, well, yeah, right. from, from the area outside the country yeah. and people eventually. Yeah, so here's my question. Aren't you going to piss off your neighbors when you release a bunch of stuff under water? <laughs> it's a hot, you said it's a hostile post-apocalyptic world. Well, we yeah. left, what we were saying is that we left up, like, the area that will allow us to, like, live on the land the longest. That's why we chose the lake and, like, all that stuff, because we have, like, the city that's thriving with, like, all the, like, crappy food, you know what I mean, like, processed stuff. But then at the same time, like, we have land to, like, build it so that we can make a, to like, a, a toxin that's only hurting the zombies and no one else. With $10,000, though? Oh, I can't. I can't talk anymore. Wait, question. Okay, how? I want to know how long you're going to wait before you like release the toxin because I feel like the zombies could get out of the fence. Like they could just like all pile on top of each other and crawl out. It'll be in there. That's why when we have the our tank to shoot anyone. But well, plus the, the toxin, the oil is going to be in the river before the zombies get to it. Yes. Because if the zombies are at the river, everybody else is already going to be in here. So the, the oil and toxin will already have to be in the river. That'll be the last thing to do. All right. Comments. Go. Is everyone's here a lovely flag? I like, I like the ideas of the water and stuff, the fences. I don't really know about the pollution and the that's going to work fully. <laughs> um, there are repercussions, but those are repercussions for the land. These are. I'm curious to know what's the other side of the country, what you do with those places. No, you're at no, next. What comments. No, no, no. I'm, just, I'm curious about it. Okay. 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 Cool. Adam, yes. comments. Your groups. Um, it's admirable the way that you want to. Just think that you can go all West Berlin and then just like lock it down on the east side. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last nearly as long as even that did. So I think you're going to die, that's what I'm saying. Perfect. <laughs> all right, comments. I'm going to going to move people out slowly. Nope, you're done. Comments. <laughs> um, I think that it's okay that you feel uh, need to poison the river. I think that, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think that in an event like this, catastrophic, it's going to leave scars, and that's one of them. My issue is I think everyone is spending way too much money. I don't understand how like we're going to afford these like, fences and all this stuff and like nanotechnology, whatever, but it seems like a lot of money. Yeah, besides that, like, 
um, all the effort and energy that's put into building that huge fence along the entire river, uh, you're going to use all your energy and everybody that's willing and able to fight if the zombies are able to pass it aren't going to have the energy to. Well, all right, Lindsay. Nope. <laughs> no one else got one. I think you need to have an antidote prepared for the river. Like, <laughs> I think you need to do that. It will eventually replenish But I think you should be working on that, like, right after in case your resources go out. All right. All right. And that is, our comment is, that is an enormous amount of area to defend. You've just divided the country in half. I think that you are going to have, like, leaks in your fences, leaks in the defenses, and you're going to have small right. pockets of zombies to get through. That's just my comment. Nope, you're done. <laughs>
you talk as if it's a large enough country that you can nuke this one part, a portion of the land and everything else still be unaffected, but yet you also discuss how you can dam and with being able to store up so much water and knock out pretty much about like two thirds of the country. So I, I don't really see the connection between the two. Basically what I'm saying is I think the nuke is going to knock it all out. Yeah. Um, the dam is a preventative measure. Right. Yeah, just my question is, however, um, <laughs> that was more of a I'll allow it. <laughs> how so you go on, are you, never mind. Uh, you're done. But yeah, there you go. Ryan, or, yep, yeah, Ryan. Um, wow. Um, how can you ensure that? I know that zombies are extremely attracted to blood, but how, I mean, you're dealing with a, an enormous horde here. You said, as Mark said, it's a, it's a population of zombies that's too large to effectively kill off. So how are you going to guarantee all the zombies go into that pool of blood? I mean, some are going to make it around the mountains. Some aren't going to go into that. Some are going to go so far away from it that they're never, they would never be in range of it. The point of having the, the giant pool of blood is that the majority of zombies will be attracted to it. So the ones that aren't, they're probably not going to last very long because they're going against their natural like, instincts to be attracted to blood. So you'll have this like little scragglers like out in the mountains that'll probably well, get if they can't die. Right? Um, <laughs> that's why we have snipers. <laughs> yeah, zombies are very predictable. If there's a giant pool of blood, they're going to smell, and that's the only thing that they're going to want to do is go towards it because they can't. But I'm saying, what are you going to do? They can't like logic. Everything's near enough to smell it. Oh, it, no, the it, it'll, they're, they're it'll going to be able Hey, well, Brian, I think your question made. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, you can make it again in the comments. Meg? Um, so I have a problem with the nuclear weapons. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you do a like specific detonation, then you run the risk of the fallout not killing all the zombies instantly, and then you have mutated zombies running around, which is even more scary than the zombies running around. <laughs> And that's scary. Yeah, but that's all like speculation because you don't know like exactly how the fallout's gonna yeah. affect the zombies. All this Good. is all this has gone off of assumption. Oh, because we think from movies that like fallout makes things stronger, but really it just cripples people and just like makes them If you don't have a head, you can't kill anybody. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> no, all right, comment. Uh, do you have a question? We we missed Would you, you consider doing two like two different blood splatters? Depend no. Depending just, if just, just like at two different areas, I'm like just five days. I mean, yeah, just one. Yeah, we're just gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Okay. Yeah. I'll say. Okay. Cool. All right. Final comments. Oh, All right. Final comments. <laughs> All right. I, I like the plan in general, but the one thing that I just had a big problem with is if that other country hears about zombies coming, why would they trade a nuke for a fourth of land that? you don't really know what the resources or what you'll get from a quarter plan. And I'm just confused about that, but everything else is great. I like it. All right, comments? I don't, I don't have any. Okay. Um, we'll go then. All right. They're not giving you that nuke. That's not happening. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic world, and they're trying to defend themselves. I don't think they're giving up their biggest weapon. Um, also, uh, I'm with Ryan. Um, a, tanks don't blow up mountains. B, um, no, they don't. Let's prove it. B, um, I don't think the pool of blood would be big enough to attract all of the zombie horde, and I think you've allocated too many of your resources to that one defense, and I think I think it's going to like cripple you in the long run. Just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. I was going to say exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, would you would like to second that? I, I second it. Final comments, guys. I thought zombies ain't brains. Um, I, like, I like the idea of the blood. It's the most creative idea yet. Um, I don't know if you guys are like the site. Um, it is where you know how to coagulate, how to not coagulate blood. Um, or not. But, um, I also am not a fan of mountain top removal, so I don't really know how to talk about that. <laughs> but it is most of but I don't know if, I mean, does it mean you have to have the country just go into a pit, though? Um, I, it's the most creative one, is what I would say. That's off awesome. still. All right, thank you guys. Okay, so in the case of impending zombie doom, we have like a three or four step plan. First of all, we're going to move all of our government officials to our rural settlement, but we're going to shift it up 
into this little cove behind the lake so that uh, we have a natural barrier. So rural settlement with government officials here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our plain resource to start a controlled burn along this border, um, pulling water from the lake to control the burn. Um, yeah, and then the city, we're moving our citizens down to the southern end of the mountain so that zombies have two targets, making them weaker. Uh, then we're going to use our remaining money to bribe this neighboring country um, to send some army troops to help defend our city and then to help defend the southern border where our government officials are going to be. Uh, Right. Yep. Yeah, uh, pretty much all of it. Um, we're also all right. So here's the tank breakdown. We've got one tank right here, um, and we're using our other tank to blow out this section of the lake, blowing, extending our northern protection all the way to the border. Um, we've got them protecting us there. Uh, we're also we're spending five thousand dollars to bribe them for protection, and we're also spending three thousand of our dollars to build a small agricultural settlement for long-term sustainability. And I think that's about it. Oh, when our plane's done, we're sending it into the zombies. Yeah. Yep, or we're gonna shoot it. Yep, we're gonna shoot it with the tank. Sacrificing one man for the greater good. Uh, yeah. Yep, so if we still got time, we'll, we'll sum that up. City population there, rural population up here with city government, so it's protected. We've got a food source right here, we've got fresh water source right there. We've got a controlled burn to extend our five days out to six or seven with the zombies coming in. And we have uh, protection from the neighbors as with their troops via a bribe. And we have our local like protection for our population as well. We'll be here for a while. Good questions. Question. What about the say that the other country that you're paying to protect your government officials, who is also being attacked by the zombies, what's not to say that they were just taking the money and Use that to their own resources. They're not being attacked by the zombies. Zombies are right coming now. from the northeast. The only yeah. way to that country is. I thought they were coming from all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was more. Yeah. Yeah. But if they're coming from. You said they were coming from all over. Yeah. There we did. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you have know that you're extending your your defendability, but the zombies are still going to be coming into your country. And I don't understand the feasibility of moving the entire city population. I mean, if, I can understand moving the people, but. You're losing all the resources of the city. Well, so our long-term sustainability population is here. These people aren't around. Well, so the, the, that goes against really saving your country. Well, our country is saved There's here. Yeah, we've got population as well as government here. We're, we're looking at a much smaller country in the end, but it's still going to be there instead of gone. Our interests are divided, so. so What's it? No. Questions. Keep going. Um, my main questions are like the, the logistics behind moving an entire city to the foot of some mountains where there's no like resources to like sustain them there. There's nowhere to live necessarily, and um, also with like um, if you're going to be able to in, like uh, uh, encourage your citizens to do that when you have your government officials somewhere else, presumably safer. Um, and also, I was wondering what was it three thousand dollars that you're going to use to bribe the other? No, we've got five, five grand. What does that five grand mean to them? If this is like a post-apocalyptic world, like isn't that just like a number? It means two things. It means safety via the zombies get through them to them through us, and it means more money in the post-apocalyptic world where you have some sort of monetary system for the sustained states. Yeah, but isn't it like all resources at that point? Like, it, it, isn't your money whole society based on just like what you have as far as land, water, food? Stuff like that. Well, let's have to short sighted country. <laughs> it's post apocalyptic, of course it's short sighted. There we go, thank you very it's much. Right. What's part your question? Part uh, how do you expect to control destroying the boundary of a lake and making it like go to an exact spot? Like, how do you not think like it's not, like, how do you think that it won't flood that area that you have everyone moving to? Well, explosions are relatively controlled. There are settlements at the yeah, very bottom. Yeah, obviously being controlled, but you're considering moving the boundary of the lake. What's well, not going to make sure. that water flow south? This way. 
Well, because water doesn't change flow direction just because you get a big explosion. I mean, we'll just extend it to where the neighboring countries choose yeah. are going to be. Right, we're, we're just. We'll have we're, yeah, we're blowing, up, we're blowing up this area right here and just letting the water flow into it. Oh, so you're making a hole. Yeah, yeah, we're making a hole. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh. All right, comments? Um, I, I this is working in the long run as far as, you know, uh, keeping a civilization alive, so, uh, to speak. But the thing is, I don't know if the proletariats are really going to like that the bourgeoisie has moved up there to Winterfell and they're just kind of stuck over there for the mountains and they're just going to, I can see that being like an uprising and then your plan that you have laid out is going to kind of fall apart because they're just not going to cooperate really. And then they're going to pull their own resources and you guys are stuck up there and you will have less resources and Hughes, I mean, what's the setup? They don't rise up and then go to the other country that apparently no zombies are talking but they're friendly with and work on a deal against you guys. We will have more resources. Cool. We don't want to like move I second that. I think that if you are basically moving the city closer to the incoming zombies, you're what you're doing is basically sacrificing that population, which means that population is probably going to want to turn on you. They're going to come. I don't understand how you're going to defend that part of like the lake, the old part right there. This part? Yeah, because I mean the zombies are just going to go to the hole and come right back up. I realize mean, lakes are very, usually very deep, but I think zombies are going to go in there. I think that's undefendable with just a tank. And I think that you will have too much controversy and rebellion with sacrificing half your population. Um, kind of kind of along the same lines. I don't think that the cooperation location of like the people in the city are like trying to move them to the bottom of the mountain. It's, it's, I, I think it's not have, really useful, yes. and like the cooperation of the people is not going to go that well. And with your all your officials and everything, you're kind of backing them into a corner. I mean, unless they want to go to the other country, but you, know, you have a corner. you have a plot foundation laid out for a tragic narrative here, and that. You're going to send your people to the foot of the cold mountains and they're going to get ravaged and they're going to get pissed off and maybe you take care of the zombies, um, but in a few years you're going to have a new set of zombies on your hand and they're going to be able to think. And your old, oh. your old citizens that you moved over there are going to come get you I'm thinking zombies. and I'm going to write a book about it. Yeah, you're separating the No, they're, 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 they're the new, the new metaphorical zombies is what I'm saying. We have limited is there your new? So is there your new enemy? And I think you had yourself in mind when you made the first one. Get up there. We made some cuts. Um, yeah, um, did you guys? Did you go? Oh uh, no, we haven't gone yet. Do you have anything? Which comment? Um, I, I think you're going to cause chaos by getting the um, by trying to force people down to the south, and then that's your main problem. Yeah, how do you live in that? Nothing. Nothing. All right. Go. So from day one, we get an evacuation going on from this eastern mountain area. We get everyone over to the city from the eastern area. And then we, uh, on day two, or also on day one, we build these uh, diversionary walls which are going to force all the zombies right in here to the mountainous area. So all the zombies would come in here through the mountains. And then on day two, we're going to spend uh, $1,000 on gasoline. We're just going to douse these mountains in gasoline. Then we're going to take the rounds from the tank, fly the airplane over the mountains, and just burn up all of these mountains. Very so we're going to create a fire line. So I'm sure some of the zombies, the uh, strong ones, will escape through here. So, but they're going to be extremely reduced. Um, then we're going to get yeah, numbers and strength, I bet. So then we're going to start to move to the seaport. So we're going to take everyone out of here, and we're going to start doing like this um, this journey towards the sea. Um, and we've also got flanking forces right here, sort of escorting us to the sea. And then they're firing. These are our two tanks, yeah. in addition to some volunteers that are uh, armed with um, forty five hundred dollars worth of arms, and then five hundred dollars spent on communications between the uh, roving group that's going out this way and then the flanking forces. So we're going to get to the rural settlement over here. They've been waiting, because on day one, we spent $4,000 on having them build us a castaway-style raft out of 
like logs and then like leather straps and stuff. Very cost efficient, very big. It's going to fit a lot of people on it. So we came over here and then we got this raft that they've been working on. That's the raft. And so it's all of our people with literal manpower who forward this raft to the seaport and then. <laughs> And then we take off on the Woodcraft to bed a more fruitful land, not pervaded by zombies. Um, we have communications equipment to where we can communicate back with the people that we've left here. But really, that's not going to happen. We're never coming back. <laughs> and that's it. I like a man who makes sense. Um, All right, let's run through the questions. Let's go the questions. John, Christian. How cost efficient is a raft that costs you a little bit half your budget? Well, I mean, it's it's more for the, it's for the women and children, so they, they're the, the future there, and uh, it's we're one of the few groups that like uh, establish a monetary fund, but it's just uh, I mean, we have so much money spent toward the gasoline and the initial burns, like that we don't have much money going to other places. So I mean, if we have like leftover cash spent from that, then it will go to other areas. So I mean, it, if, we, if we don't use all that money. Then Ryan, you're up. Um, I basically was going to say that same thing. I just don't think that I think you're going to have a bunch of people panicking, trying to get, trying to save themselves, and the whole thing just kind of like falling apart. So that's all I have a question. That's like a comment. Uh, I guess I'll have a cool. I have a question. Why do you criticize me and Meg for cutting off half our population, then you leave half your population? Yeah. We didn't answer the half, question. We didn't leave half our population. You did. So what the coup? This doesn't regard your plan. We could have made, you know, speculation. That's my question. Yeah. All right. Trying to negotiate with a different if, country. If they don't want to go on the raft, they don't have to go to a raft. That's an option for them. We're just letting the women and children survive while leaving the men to fight right. off these zombies. Okay, clarify something for it. Not a right. question. Uh, just for clarification, don't you have a, two groups of people that you've left that you are planning on communicating with with communication equipment? Right. Or so yeah, you? all the people from the mountains came to the city. Okay. So and you do have people, people left. People in the rural settlement building the raft to move here. Okay. So you and do so have people, people leaving the raft, <coughs> and then the men staying and fighting. And so whenever the men have, a bit, like, hopefully, eventually, all killed the zombies, they use the radio equipment and say our country is safe. Mm. And they come back. Okay. Nope. All right. Questions. Is this assuming that the that the women and men are going to be separated? Is that what you know, we're talking right? Or no? That was our plan, is that if the women wouldn't stay with their families, that is an option. We Sounds like Lord of the Flies. Yeah, well, okay. uh, what I'm trying to get to is that if you have all the men and women separate. Wait, you can make a comment. You make a comment. Comment. Yeah. All right, comments, go. Yeah. They never asked Oh, then what was that? No, I, was, oh, no. I was making sure, like, seeing, like, if that was the case, then that's mm -hmm. kind of really improbable because if you have all the men and women, like, you can't, like. No morale is oh, what you're saying. You're just know, just a fan. <laughs> Huh? Well, if you said, like, I don't know, Talking if the women mess up and, like, just, just like, end up being on a rap, you're going to have, like, all women and then yeah. women. You're depriving them of All right, <laughs> comments. Christian, go. Uh, well, my first thought, which I shared, was uh, I wonder, like, what year that you are set in. Um, <laughs> because it just sounds, uh, I mean, I kind of thought of Noah's Ark for a second. <laughs> um, I don't really know how feasible a raft is. So you got, they're safe away from the zombies. Okay. So how, what, what happens when the, the waves, you know, they like build up? They like capsize. They get like, like athlete's foot on the like, <laughs> on like logs. Um, I I think it's um, more conceptual or. All right, that, right. I don't think you have a very effective method for transporting and securing medicine to people like who have diabetes. <laughs> just, just, I'm just going on a random so disease. Okay, anyways. <laughs> <What's it? laughs> Shameless plugs. Um, I just think that if you have that much confidence in your men to defeat the zombies and there's no point in sending your women away, it seems like a waste of resources. Yeah, you also spent your tank shells. You don't get to spend all of your tank shells in the mountains, like you said, and then shoot tank shells later. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> 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 Burning the mountains, terrible idea. I mean, it'll work, but like, 
what if, what if they like snow I don't think it will work no because gas evaporates really quickly. I think that by the time you lay all the gasoline out and you try to light it on fire, it's all going to be gone. Plus, you'll have a thousand dollars where it's not nearly enough to light up the whole mountains. Yeah. And then the raft is just not going to work. <laughs> all right. Good deal. All right, guys. We have one for we have one for Adam and Xander. Yeah. yeah. We have one for the Spanish team. Uh, we, have we have another one for the Spanish team. We have another one. We have one for Team Extreme. We have another one for the Spanish team. Yeah. Maybe we won. Um, oh, and we have another one for the. All right. Yeah. Let's make a movie out of it.